Rub up your engines! Well, the Korean Hyundai and Kias, hey, they're still making absolute junk. They're now recalling another 120,000 cars because they might just stop going down the road while you're driving. They can have sudden power loss where you can't move. You go down the highway, you step on the gas, the car won't go anywhere. Now they say that you'll get a 20 to 30 second warning that says your car's going to stop going, then it disengages the transmission. They're not the greatest cars, and of course the transmissions aren't the greatest transmissions either, history of problems. Turns out they have an electric pump inside the dual clutch automatic transmission. Yeah, the automatic transmissions have pumped to pump the fluid, and it's electric. Oh, let's see, what could possibly go wrong? Have an electric pump pumping the fluid that gets hot inside the transmission, sealed unit holds the heat in, like that's not going to break, right? The old ones were all mechanical. And did they break? Not very often. But now it's all well, it's computerized, yes, make it electric, much better. And then they break. This is the same thing with electric water pumps. Some companies have electric water pumps in the engines, right? Water and electricity. What could go wrong, right? Just a stupid idea, but it's computer controlled, they can do it. The old mechanical ones, easy to replace, last a long time. The electronic ones, no. A lot of companies have serious problems. And now, in their stupid dual clutch transmissions, the electric pumps can go out and then you can't drive. Covers a lot of cars. 21 to 2022. Hyundai, Santa Fe, Sonata, Velostar, Elantra, Kona, Santa Cruz, Kia K5, and Kia Sorento. 2021 to 2022. So, if you're worried, go to the National Highway Traffic Safety Association. Dot gov website, put in the VIN number of your Kia or your Hyundai, and if it's covered, you'll know. They gotta fix a stupid thing. Now, as per usual, you don't get a paper notification till early December. It's still October here, right? <laughs> Oh, the lawyers probably got that. Well, you must give them a lag time. If people die in the interim, well, that's just the way it goes. I mean, imagine you're on a freeway in LA doing 75, right? And all of a sudden you got 15 to 20 seconds. This car starts shutting itself down and it won't accelerate anymore. Brilliant. This is why you don't want electronic parts and things like that in the transmission, in the oil pump. A physical part will not do that. But if it's mechanical, it's going to be spinning, right? But the electronics, they go out, everything goes out. So people don't comprehend. They think this electronics is good. It's actually bad. And these are 2021, 2022 cars. Imagine when they actually get old, then they're really going to start breaking down. These electronics are almost new. Imagine as they get old. I mean, geez, how long does your phone last anymore? Sometimes you're lucky if you get a couple of years before it craps out. Well, imagine if you have to replace your car every couple of years. Not a smart idea. And as usual, don't buy one of those Korean cars. They don't know what the heck they're doing. A light says, is there anything else I need to do? My first engine blew up and I put a used engine in. So there's oil left from the old engine in the exhaust. Should I worry about it? Will it go away? Well, if you got a good new engine, you're not going to have to worry about it. Whatever oil's in there will just blow out. Heat and the heat eventually will evaporate. The only thing you have to worry about is if you had really a ton of oil in the exhaust, it might ruin the catalytic converter. It'll clog it up. So you might get some catalytic converter cleaner and put it in. There's things like CataClean. You just pour it in a gas tank. You might do that to prevent the catalytic converter from going bad. If it's not too late already. Now, I mean, your other engine blew up. Was your check engine light on with, you know, the inefficient catalytic converter code? Was that in there? If it wasn't, just drive it and it should blow the old stuff out. Eason0815 says, my car won't shift into any gear. I got a 2010 Nissan Pathfinder with 55,000 miles. I got back home. I pulled in the driveway. Now, when I let go of the brake, it just slides. It won't go into park. And the dash says it's in drive. No warning lights. Help. Get a transmission shifter cable. Your cable's broken. When it's loose like that and it says it's still in drive, the cable is broken. And they will break. You only got 55,000 miles. Now, Nissan doesn't have the greatest trannies in the world, but that's a Pathfinder. And that's got rear wheel drive transmission, the long one. And those are pretty well made. Now, maybe you got even lucky. You might not even need the cable. Jack it up and look under. The cable connects and there's a clip. Maybe the clip fell off and the cable just fell off and you can clip it back on. Could be that simple. If not, the cable itself is broken. It is an actual cable. And eventually they get frayed and they break and they come up. But that's your problem. Crawl under there. Maybe the pin came off and you can just get another pin, stick a cotter pin in it or if you lost the pin and it disappeared you go to any hardware store find a pin that fits in there with a hole stick it in and then stick a cotter pin in a little hole so it doesn't come out anymore i see that all the time in those a lot of 46 says should i buy now or wait until next year i need a new suv should i get now or wait until 2023 i would wait <clears throat> for one main reason you said you don't have to do it now it's not like you just want to your car isn't falling apart i would wait because 
No one knows when the recession is coming. It looks like it's on its way. It's starting in China. Tesla lowered his price of the Model 3 Teslas in China because he says, well, there's kind of a recession starting in China. Well, maybe it'll start there just like the flu. Who knows, right? But when it comes, prices will go down because when people don't buy, they have to lower the prices or they're stuck with cars. Always does that. They had the big recession in Houston. Let me tell you. My neighbor, this was decades ago, he paid like $4.25 for a house. He left it, couldn't afford it anymore. It got foreclosed on, it was sold at mortgage. He paid $4.25. It sold at mortgage for $68,000 because there were foreclosed houses everywhere. And the guys with money are smart. They're like, <laughs> I'll wait till there's a deal. I'll go to some of these auctions, see who's there, see who's bidding on it. Car market's the same thing. If it's flooded with cars, they can't sell. And if a real recession comes, they'll have even more because all their cars that are leased and are sold and the guys can't pay the monthly payments, they'll get returned on. And they'll have all kinds of cars that they can't get rid of because nobody's buying cars at this high price. The price has to come down. So wait, wait. That's what I said. Galil says, which car should I sell? I got an 05 Camry with 220,000 miles and an 08 Nissan Altima 2.5 with 100,000 miles. I want to sell one of them. The Camry burns half a quart of oil every thousand miles. I know the Nissan has a Jetco transmission. So what should I do? The Camry's got a lot of miles, right? The Nissan's got 100,000 miles. But the Camry is a much better car than the Nissan. I guarantee you that Jetco transmission eventually is going to go out. It's going to cost you thousands to fix it. Camry, not that way. You burn half a quart of oil every thousand miles. That's nothing. Oil's cheap. Just keep putting the oil in it. I had a guy bring me one with 220,000 miles. Did the same thing. And I told him, keep it. And he kept it. He's driving it around. It's his work car. He puts all his tools and stuff in the back of it. With the Nissan, it's going to break. It's not a question of will it. It's a question of just when will it. The Camry is going to go a lot further. I've seen some of those with half a million miles on them. I've never seen the you know, those Altimos with that kind of mileage. The late model ones like 08. The older ones were much better, but that was before Renault, the French company, bought Nissan, had all his problems with Carlos Ghosn going to Lebanon, sneaking out of Japan because they wanted to put him in jail. So, no, stay with the camera. The Mercury Cougar says, my Toyota lock on lock beep is very weak. I got an 03 Avalon. When I press the unlock, it unlocks, but I don't really hear a beep. And I later noticed it's really weak. I'm not sure. How can I fix this? It locks and it unlocks? I wouldn't even bother if I were you. The beeping is done electronically. Eventually, the electronic beeper breaks down. Now, if you want, get a stethoscope, put it around, and you'll find the noisemaker, where it's coming from. You can unplug it, and you can plug a new one in. The only problem is, if it's the module, the module costs a small fortune. If it's just a relay, they're 25, 35 bucks or so, right? But if it's the module, they cost a small fortune. Now, why do you care if it's working? It's open, it's closing, so it doesn't beep as much. I would rather not have a beep. You know why? Because People can't hear it. They don't know what's happening. A lot of thieves now will have receivers, and when they hear the beep, they know you're unlocking your car, and they can record, then they can steal your car later on. So I would rather have one that didn't beep in the first place. I wouldn't even want the beep. Mike Ford Collins says, what's the right pickup truck? I want a 4x4 pickup truck, 2018 to 22. I won't buy a Ford or GM, as both have grown woke, which I don't support. What about Toyota? trucks. I don't know about woken anything myself. I don't care what people's philosophies are if they build something correctly. I don't know what the world has come to. It's like reading a good book, right? If a guy's a good writer, I read his book and I like it. I don't care what the guy does in his personal life. He's a good writer. Most writers are kind of weird anyway, so you expect them to do weird things. If they make an interesting movie, I'll watch it. I don't care what they do in their personal life. That's their personal life. But I'd agree with you. I wouldn't buy Ford or GM because, especially GM, they don't make such great trucks anymore. You can't beat the Toyota 4x4s. The only problem is they're expensive. Everybody knows they're good, so everybody pays more for them. That's how it goes. Just decide. Do you want a Tacoma? That's midsize, or do you want a Tundra, a big giant monster one? You're buying used, so prices are still too high. If you got a choice, if I were you, I'd wait a little longer, see what happened. Then again, the other day, a guy brought me a car. Now, it happened to be a Nissan, and it wasn't bad. He got a Nissan 4x4, and he paid a dollar for it. It had 200,000 miles, but it still ran perfectly good, so you never know. You might look at some of the Nissan Frontiers. They make pretty good four-wheel drive systems, too, and not as well made as the Toyotas, but you can get them a heck of a lot cheaper used. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.